Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about creating artificial light that kind of looks real, if you will. I'm Dan Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this. This is a series I'm doing where I'm looking back at some old images and kind of talking about the way I lit it and my mood and some of the, the angles there. Um, if you are interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe and let's get to it. Um, this image here, let me give you, show you the screen. This is of uh, Alex. So... This now, was, this is an older image. Um, some of these are going to be older because I feel like it's nice to talk about old images. Um, and what I wanted to do, in fact, I was doing a, a demo on creating, uh, faking natural light, things what I call it, well, natural, whatever, faking existing light. And what I wanted to do was create an image where somebody was by a window that uh, that it felt like it was being lit possibly by like a street light or, or maybe a car going by. And of course, anybody who knows and watches any of my stuff knows that I am on the 12th floor uh, of a building in Manhattan. So you were not going to get light from a street light or any of that kind of stuff inside my studio. So I had to create it myself. Um, here I'm using two lights. Uh, one is uh, just a bare dado light uh, tungsten head, and I'm just balanced to, to, to you know, my camera's balanced to, to tungsten. Um, that's coming through the window, just blasting through the window. And the other one's actually a small softbox, uh, also a data light. Actually, here I can do this. You can see this is the other direction, right? Um, this over here is the light coming through the window, you know, and then this is the light in the space. Um, you know, the intention, the intent of the shot was this, but I, you know, once you're there, you might as well shoot different stuff, right? So basically, I had her spin around, and I kind of like the shot too. I like the way that, that this uh, shadow uh, uh, works on her face. There's enough light coming. You know, you've got the softbox here, right? Um, there's enough light kind of coming here. You can actually see it in her eye, where it's then bouncing off the window, which you you can almost see. It see there's a highlight here, um, and that light bouncing off the window is actually what's filling in the shadow a bit here, right? And of course, the hot the hot spot is the actual hot light coming in. But this is really the image that that we're that we're going to talk about because this is what I was going for here. So there are things in this image that are absolutely fake, right? Um, <laughs> obviously it's all fake, but the idea here was to create this thing with somebody looking out a window, possibly in a hotel room, you know? Um, so I, I, first of all, I thought about it a few different ways. There were some technical issues that I needed to deal with. Number one, right here at the window, there is a, uh, you know, the crossbar where the two windows meet and you can slide up and down, basically the separation between the two windows. So I couldn't really raise the light up higher, um, to create, you know, if it was a street light, right? The light would be up higher. Because it would have thrown a shadow from this on her body, which would not have looked good. Um, so I didn't want to do that. Also, in order to get the light in the shot, which I definitely wanted, um, the light would, I, the shot would have been much wider, and I felt like that wasn't as intimate, right? If you're thinking about being inside of a room, and the, you know there's a certain isolation to the shot, you you don't want um, for your person to have tons of space to walk around, right? I mean, there there are shots where you could do it with someone who's really tiny in the in the shot, and the, and then you do isolation. But that's not what I wanted to do here. Um, I wanted to feel tight. I wanted to feel like I was there with her. So this height doesn't make really any sense logically. Right? I guess if she was on the second floor, maybe I don't know. Um, but it doesn't matter. It works. Nobody is looking at this image. I mean, I don't think nobody's ever looked at this image before and said that light's in the wrong spot. You know, because it feels right. Why does it feel right? It just does. It feels right because the image works as a whole. Also, there's a little light over here, which is um, like a flare. I, I'm pretty sure this is actually something that was like a, a you know, another building that had a light on. That, thankfully for me, most of the buildings across the street either didn't have lights on because they're commercial and this was at night, or they weren't bright enough that they affected my shot. Because what I didn't want was a whole bunch of lights out there. That That's a certain kind of shot. It's not what I wanted here. So I wanted this light here. In fact, I actually think I tweaked my white balance a little bit. I may have actually um, put a slight warming gel on this because this light actually feels a little bit blue. Well, that's part, partially because the reason was coming through the window. And I wanted it to be overexposed and hot, right? So we got this, we, I wanted this cutout, right? This cutout feel. We're really just lighting up, you know, we're losing. This is completely blown out. You know, there's no information there at all. We are losing the detail completely here. Um, because when something, when a bright light is shown on somebody at night, that's how it feels to your eyes. Like even though our eyes have a lot of room, we can pick stuff up. If somebody like pulls up in a, a car, let's say, let's say you're out in a field, and somebody pulls up in a car with the headlights on, you're like, you know, because the light feels blinding, and that's what I wanted. I wanted this blinding light feel. 
Fortunately for me, Manhattan is filthy, and the windows, of course, were super dirty, so that worked in my favor. So I didn't have to do anything like um, add water to them. That's actually just the grime that was on the outside of the window. The inside of the windows are clean, but the outside, oof. Um, so I left it dirty. I didn't clean it, and I basically just kept it there. Now, that would have been fine, except then she would have been an absolute silhouette, and you wouldn't have seen anything else, and it would have just been terrible, because all that's being lit by the outside light is where you see the highlight. So if you imagine just, I'll zoom in, just basically this, this, and this up here is all you would have seen, and it's all you would see um, if I didn't do that. Not this, because this part here is being lit again by the softbox. Why did I use a softbox here? Not because I wanted a soft light per se, but I wanted the light to feel like open and even and available. I didn't want it to feel like another light pounding down on her. Even though in a hotel room, you'd probably have a small light source and it probably realistically wouldn't look soft like this. Um, again, this is wrong. <laughs> like if you literally took somebody, this is why, by the way, I love to light things. Because how light feels to us and how we feel like it should look is heavily influenced by film, right? And filmmakers don't like stuff that the way that it looks <laughs> at all, you know? If you were to actually stand in a window um, with the hotel room lights on, it would not look like, like this at all. It wouldn't look like this looking out your window ever. Just not going to. The only way it might is if a car was actually driving up, possibly. But even then, it would look different. Like, it wouldn't be so confined. I mean, this is a small little data light just lighting her. It would cover more on her hands. It would, it would have lit this part up here. Like, it just wouldn't have looked like this, right? I'm completely creating something fake. But that fake thing feels like we think it should because we have this in our mind, this kind of idea of what it should look like, even though it's not really what it looks like. So again, that's why soft light out here. So this is, and this is not super soft either. Um, we can see the shadow edge here. It's a soft box, but it's a relatively small one, uh, as you can see here in the eye. This is probably the data light soft box. Oh, about 90% sure there. So you're looking at like a, like a one foot square soft box, although it's relatively close to her. Um, and creating, you know, kind of, yeah, you can even see the shadow here. You can see that the shadow transition is, is, is smooth, but it's not crazy soft. So, yeah, I mean, what you're looking at here is two lights to create, basically, what feels like somebody looking out a window at a bright light, and you're not thinking about the other light that's in there. Um, it, it's all about mood. It's all about, uh, you know, just the idea of what's going on in that moment. It's subtle in color. You know, it, I kept it very basic. She's wearing a black outfit. These white drapes are already in the window. The real, the, it's almost monochromatic, uh, but you get that little shock. She has red hair. You get the little shock of red hair up here. So it kind of draws you, you know. You're wondering, right? You're looking and you're wondering what's out that window. And that's really what I wanted. It actually worked to my advantage, too. You can see it looks like there's two lights or maybe even three. And that's because they're the, those, like, double pane, you know, uh, windows that you have in buildings that... So you so it creates a multiple light source out there. So it actually has that kind of interesting feel to it too. It's not just like whoosh. So I think that really worked as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, this is basically how you do this kind of stuff. You look at what light really does. Then you think about how light f should work in your mind. And you kind of combine those two things to create ultimately a shot that feels a certain way. Even if, oops, I got a stream on Twitch soon. Well, that's a good time to, uh, to, to let you know that if you don't follow me already on Twitch, <laughs> uh, follow me on Twitch. Uh, you know, we um, I lost my train of thought. It, it creates a, a certain feel to it, right? And and we always want to create a feel. That's what light's about, right? It's about, that's the next stage of lighting, right? And I'm going to talk about that a lot in this series. We are no longer, when we're looking at these images, talking about the idea of getting a proper exposure. We are talking about using light to create mood to create a dynamic image that we want in our head. This isn't just about problem solving. This is about creation. And that's where this comes in. You know, very simply, I was able to take her uh, and create this image. You know, both of them, I kind of like the other one too. I actually, she really liked the other one. I think that's why I ended up doing it. Um, to create this image that has a certain vibe, a certain feel to it that, um, that communicates what I wanted to communicate in that moment. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. Do you do you guys have a fake light like this? Do you put things out windows? Like how, how common is that? I wonder for you guys to do. Uh, again, these are data lights. You could do a similar thing using flash, 
you would just really need to control it. I will say this, if I was doing this shot with the flash, this is probably the one time you'll ever hear me say this, this is where I might use a snoot. Because the fact that the light is like a nice round light really makes a difference here. So you, you wouldn't want to see that like reflector shape in the window. So I probably, I would consider using a snoot with like some uh, diffusion over the front of it. So it creates that nice round uh, expression. So there you go. The one time you'll ever hear me say to use a snoot. Uh, but let me know what you guys use and, and, and what do you like and what do you want to see. Um, let me know and uh, I'll keep doing videos like this. Go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you next time.